Mine's always beeping me because I forget to turn. Good evening and welcome to the Hampton Beach Area Commission's uh, monthly meeting, April 27th. Can you all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Introduction of commission is to my far right. We have Bob Ladd representing the Hampton Beach Village District. Fran McMahon representing Rockingham Planning Commission. Bill Watson representing the New Hampshire DOT. John Nyan representing the town of Hampton. Ann Marshawn, our secretary. Chuck Rage representing the Hampton Beach Village District. Bob Preston representing the Hampton Area Chamber of Commerce. And Jason Bassard representing the town planning department. Public comment. Anybody here in the audience to speak on uh, any of the agenda items? Mr. Preston. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm just hoping to touch on a little bit of old business here on um, the exit, which I've been trying to get on Ashworth out. I went to a quick timeline. I went to the Board of Selectmen January 23rd, and the chairman at the time was Mr. Brown. We said, we have plenty of time to look at it. Uh, I came to the HBAC on 2-2, and it was voted to table until you contacted Diane Martin. It was moved in February. That meeting got moved, and we ended up in March 23rd. And it was still being considered. We are waiting for a meeting with Diane Martin. It was continued tabled, still considering. So I believe that was your comment, John. Um, I'd like to see if we could get this off the table by, you know, maybe making a motion up or down. Or possibly consider having a look back, looked at by other people that are have a little more expertise in this field. Um, in one of the comments from Selectman Bridal, the opposition, the only opposition I've seen to this was from um, Vic DeMarco, who runs the lot, and Chairman Bridal, well, former Chairman Bridal, Selectman Bridal. On the, on the traffic backing up down there, okay, I, I, I think I addressed the concerns of the parking lot superintendent by narrowing that down. I gave everybody a copy, and I'd be glad to do that again. Uh, Chairman Bridal said the street was too narrow. Well, Brown Ave is actually wider than every leaded street on the beach. When you put in a parking on one side of the street, and Brown has zero on either side. So... You know, I, I don't think that's an issue. Um, this is going around in a circle, and I, I'd like to see it go forward. The police chief came in on the very first meeting in January 3rd with no opposition. I spoke to the fire chief. I spoke to the public works. So, I, I, you know, I, I'd like to see. I'd like to see if you guys would give me some support. I know I talked to John in the hallway two Mondays ago, and um, and John said to me, Charlie, let's. He was with Dean, and they came in for their report with Slackner, and he said, let's let's do a compromise. And he said, let's try to do what they've been doing in the past, is opening it up on the fireworks nights. And I said, John, this is the compromise. I said, I came in a few years ago, and I asked that the town consider moving the parking lot, entrance and exit, to Brown Ave based on they would increase their revenues. As I took the numbers from the precinct, and, I mean, you, this is a real fair comparison, apples to apples, where these lots are 25 feet apart. And the town and the precinct was making five or $600 more per space. But what this is really about is getting people off the boulevard. And I think part of what's going on with the transportation is that. Right now, when you exit that lot to get to the water tower, you go up G Street and you cross 13 of the busiest crosswalks in the town of Hampton and it's a one mile drive if you exit out this lot you'll be going half a mile, half the distance and you will cross two of the slowest crosswalks in town 
So I think this achieves some of the goals of the commission to get traffic off the boulevard. I mean, I know you're in the process with the with police to buy gates, you know, to cut down on that pedestrian conflict and the car conflict, and this is a way to, to do it. If if you don't, if this board doesn't think that they're not sure about this because of two other people's comments, then maybe you know we could have the planner, Fran. He's with RPC, Bill from DOT, or in VHB, do a fast track opinion on us. Because this, this to me is a win-win common sense. Personally, I want the option of parking in a town lot at the center of the beach with easy exit, knowing that 20% of my money is going to the rec fund for the children of Hampton. And I, and I would really appreciate if you would help me get this done. Thank you very much. Johnny, before you sit down, just reiterate for us public safety's view on this uh, recommend your recommendation. Chief Sawyer, I mean, again, as you know, I can't speak for anybody else. Chief Sawyer said he didn't foresee a problem. Right. Uh, the fire chief I spoke to and Rich also spoke to didn't foresee a problem. Because this is, again, this is the incremental release. You know, and, and they're, they're two guys that are right there. They know. You know, this, this exit actually lines up exactly with the ramp to the to the fire station. So and Mr. Bridal's concerns were traffic backing up on Brown and being a public safety issue. And, and the chief of police actually said, and I think most of us here would concur, that the only time you see traffic backing up on Brown Ave is when it queues going into the beach at the stop sign of Brown and Ashworth Ave. Anytime that traffic is is backed up on Brown, where Rusty's talking about, could possibly happen on a half a hand a year. And at that point, every street on that beach is mired. You know, that's around the 4th of July. You know, Rusty said that the streets were narrow, and they're actually wider than every other street. And this is about getting cars off the boulevard, but it's also about making it easy for our townsfolk. I can drive down there because... Right now, the best place to park in the town of Hampton is the beach. If you want to try to get in and out, is you go down 101, you turn down Brown, you take an out, you know, you take a left on Island, and you park in the town lot to the precinct lot. And the reason you do that is so that you can get in and out. You know, you don't get stuck in traffic. And by doing this, it allows that it gets that extra lot. And that's really about as far as you can go to still be able to do this. But I think in the long run, they find out that they're going to increase their revenues and would help support our local rec fund. So. Okay. I will um, put this under old business uh, when we get to old business for it to be opened up to the uh, commission for discussion. And if somebody wants to make a, uh, a motion or a recommendation, um, I'll hear it at that point. Okay? Thank you very much. All right. And, and, I, and I'd, I'd just like to throw in, you know, if, if they found out that I was wrong and this did create a problem, is a very easy solution. Close the gate. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jolly. Um, appointments. We um, we had initially had uh, Chris Jacobs from the Hampton Public Works coming in tonight just to give us a quick update on the uh, beach uh, sewer project. And um, I got a call from uh, the town today indicating that uh, they would like to postpone it. Um, they're not just right ready yet to uh, share uh, what um, what the plan is to move forward. Uh, they're hoping that that plan will have uh, been decided upon in May, so we're pushing this uh, presentation uh, to the May meeting. Next, uh, review and approval of the minutes of both the special meeting in uh, February, which I failed to do last month, and then also March's meeting. So for those of you, Rick, you wanna join us? I'm fine. I'm you okay? I didn't know there was another, I couldn't, I'm fine. Is it your, is your okay. Right. All right. For the record, uh, Mr. Griffin uh, has joined the, uh, the commission meeting tonight. Okay, uh, let's go to the uh, minutes of February 14th, which was a special meeting uh, that focused on the uh, H, H uh, House Bill uh, 302, page one, page two, 
page three. Page four. Hearing no edits or changes, I'll entertain a motion to accept the minutes of the special meeting on February 14th. Motion made by Mr. Watson. Do I have a second, Mr. Rage. Any further discussion? All in favor of the minutes? Opposed? Unanimous, thank you. Moving now to the monthly meeting of March 23rd. And all were in pres present. Page one. Page two, page three, page four. Hearing no edits or changes. It was, there was one correction. Okay. Uh, Mr. Preston uh, gave that to me, and I'll make the correction in the okay. final minute. Okay. Then I'll accept a motion with a, uh, an amendment uh, or a change from Mr. Preston. Uh, which was what? When we did the walkabout down at Brownies, yeah. there was 18 units there, they're going to be removed, and the minutes say there's 18 in additional 18, when in fact it should be the same okay. number of units. Okay. So um, I'll entertain a motion as uh, for the minutes uh, to be approved as amended. Motion made by Mr. Preston, second by Mr. Rage. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Opposed? Thank you. Okay, uh, Mike uh, Hausman was not able to uh, attend tonight, but he did call me with the uh, treasurer's report, which is as of today, we have $9,628.43 in our uh, bank account. Uh, do I have a motion to accept the uh, treasurer's report as, as reported? Mr. Griffin uh, made the motion, Mr. Preston second. All in favor? Opposed? Thank you. Okay. Uh, probably a very important part of tonight's meeting is to welcome Mr. Rose back to Hampton. Uh, we all know that he has been our project manager for our transportation grant. I have asked him to come in tonight to uh, give us a presentation on task order number three, which has been recently executed. Um, and that will take uh, the second and final component of our transportation grant. Mr. Rose, welcome. Thank you. So what I wanted to do tonight is I know, I, I believe, you've all received at least the preliminary version of the task order number three at the last meeting or prior to the last meeting. I thought it would be helpful if I came in tonight to talk about the actual work that we're going to be doing and answer any questions and also to talk through what the preliminary schedule looks like to carry the project not just through uh, the work specific to task order three but also to complete the uh, the uh, area master plan update. So, any questions before I start? Or you're going to wait. Waiting's fine. So, uh, just to go through page by page and just give you a brief overview of what we're looking at, uh, the what we're doing at a 30,000 foot level is using the remaining dollars from that $300,000 transportation community and system preservation grant uh, that the Area Commission received back in 2013 and completing what we can with those remaining dollars <coughs> to look at the actual what the feasibility is for the different concepts that we've talked about in the various public meetings uh, and, and uh, workshops that we've had through the course of the project. And at this point we've got just a little over 131000 and change left in the contract. Um, just to clarify, there's work going on in our task order three. Task order one is not yet complete. Task order one is the first task order that talks about completing the master plan. So we're doing all this work, issuing a new task order every time there's a new task, a new sequence of, of effort to undertake to better inform that plan. But at the end of this task order, we go back to one and complete the work there. So they haven't, we haven't expended the full amount of the grant yet, but it's all spoken for. If that makes sense. Any questions? Good. So for this, uh, what VHB has done 
in conversations with the department is kind of broken down based on the last exchange we had where uh, we had that last public hearing. The Area Commission provided some feedback on what they considered to be the priority areas. And what VHB has tried to do here is indicate that based on that, they've split the project area into four different areas. And so for the purposes of this task order, it's the southern, uh, southern section, which is the Hampton Bridge to the split Ocean and Ashworth. And then looking at uh, Ocean Boulevard South, which goes from that split up to Boar's Head, Ashworth Ave, and then Ocean Boulevard North. And then it jumps into the scope of services. Uh, section one is speaking to base map preparation, which is just looking at what are the conditions on the ground, how accurate are they, uh, there's some conversation about LIDAR. That's just a, a more accurate type of survey that uses laser to gauge the distance. Can you, William, I, I apologize yeah, for interrupting, no. but can you, that, that word, just I didn't know what that was, so for purposes of the commission and anybody who's listening, can you just quickly define? L LIDAR? Yeah, yeah I, I believe it's actually uh, 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 putting the, uh, uh, taking the two words light and radar and pushing them together. I know there's a word that, that means that, and I can't think of it off the top of my head, but that's all it is. It's using laser, laser light as a range finder to gauge the distance. Okay. All right, sorry to interrupt. It, it's, a, it's a more accurate approach to survey. So uh, one thing to point out is that in talking about the surface preparation, um, some of the assumptions we made were that because it's so detailed from the bridge to Boar's Head along Ocean Boulevard, that's primarily where the focus of those efforts are going to be. It's not that the other areas aren't important. It's just that we, we do have funding constraints that we're bumping up against. Uh, the next section talks about uh, advancing some of the concepts that we have. Uh, the, the term preliminary design is used. It is not if you were to go to the Department of Transportation and say we're engaging in preliminary design, it's not the same thing. It's not the same level of detail. But it is beyond just a concept and throwing something on a piece of paper and saying, boy, that looks like it'll work. Now we're actually going through the effort to figure out, does, will this actually work? Undertaking traffic analysis, which is that first part. Uh, the traffic analysis talks about effectively doing uh, one signal signalized intersection layout and one roundabout layout at the intersection with the State Park driveway, uh, just to the north of the bridge. Uh, single and roundabout at Ocean and Ashworth at the split, that intersection there. And then taking uh, two of each of those and, and doing some more detailed uh, background, it's effectively looking at the, the uh, controlling criteria, site distance, uh, available right-of-way, turning radii, all that type of information. Will it work? Will it support the traffic volume that we anticipate? Will it provide an adequate level of service? And will it work and be safe? And do we have the space to construct? And it's important to point out, you know, and if you haven't noticed, that each of these where we're talking about doing any kind of uh, alternative development, they do, we do, intend to have a meeting uh, with the department and VHB to talk through some of this beyond just our Bureau of Planning, but to actually talk to district to, to, to speak with the folks in uh, traffic, highway design, and bring them in and have them provide some feedback at those stages to see if, if this makes sense or there's other concerns that maybe they're not aware of that the department has that we know about. So there is some coordination beyond what we've already been undertaking. Any questions? So far so good? Mm -hmm. uh, and they'll also be doing cost estimates for each of these alternatives. So we get a ballpark uh, baseline for what we think it'll cost. Uh, Ocean Boulevard South is the next section uh, that we talk about here. There are three sections to that segment, a southerly section, a middle, and a northern section. And the scope talks a little bit about that.
And again, there's it, it prob uh, at least two alternatives that they're looking at, identifying for each of those sections, one roundabout, one signalized, the best fit option that they identify in their analysis. Uh, and I also want to call out that they do intend to look at some alternative intersection alternatives for the Highland and Church intersections. Uh, that, that does include signalized, uh, single lane roundabout for Highland, and for Church Street, they're looking at a three-legged signalized intersection uh, and a four-legged uh, intersection with the jug handle. That was something that came up you know, over the course of the public meetings. So those do remain in the scope, if anybody had questions on that. William, just, yep. just to clarify, you talked about roundabouts and signaling, but on both the, the southerly segment and the middle segment, there will be work done to uh, some preliminary design on, especially from Havel up through to the playground, there will be some uh, preliminary design work done on those two alternatives that we had asked for, correct? Yes. Okay. Yep. And in all this, uh, one of the things, especially for the uh, Ocean Boulevard portion, mm -hmm looking at how well they can accommodate all of the different things that we w that you want to accommodate there so making sure that there's pedestrian access providing safe uh, passage for all of the modes of traffic sidewalks parking all of it so whatever they can fit they're going to try to fit and that includes all of the different options we talked about with the sidewalk that stays or goes uh, on the on the parking lot side okay. And then the rest of it is, is pretty straightforward, just talking about the coordination, graphics development, uh, development of prioritization, implementation, and funding strategy for all the alternatives that are identified, and then uh, developing a report for this that will inform the efforts that go back to the work I was talking about earlier under Task Order 1 to update the master plan. And then what I wanted to talk about was the second page, which is the preliminary schedule. Before you go there? Yes. A couple of questions. Okay. Um, and, I, and I know that um, we did have the commission review uh, this document, but I just want to make sure, and for the record in the minutes, that this task order three is covering, as you have indicated, um, what we considered our priorities with the money that was left in the in the contract so it will not cover just I want to make sure people understand this will not cover any preliminary design recommendations on Ashworth Ave except for the two alternatives of a signalization or a roundabout at the end of Ashworth joining where it, it joins with Ocean Boulevard correct and then the second area that is not going to be covered <coughs> under Task Order 3 is north of Boar's Head to win a comment. Correct. So my question would be, and I don't expect an answer tonight, but my question would be, if we had to, similar to what we did when we went from Task Order 1 to Task Order 2, which included, <laughs> the, we amended it, to include from Boar's Head to Winnicott. Mm -hmm. If we were to go to Task Order 4, saying that, okay, if we wanted that to be included, and understanding that there is no existing money to do that, is there a way we could get at least an idea of if we included Boar's Head to Winnicott? How much would we have to add to this task order to make that happen? Sure. So the complicating factor here is the contract is the contract. We can't add any dollars to it, and we can't add any time to it. If there were a desire on the part of the, of the commission to engage some additional investigations on that northerly section, we have to find room for it within the existing budget. So that means cutting back on the scope of work for the rest of the of the rest of the study area. So we can't add another funding source to this contract. 
And the reason for that is that the vehicle, the contract vehicle that we used, and I'm going to get way into contract detail, and if, it, if anybody has questions on it, just jump, jump right out and say it. But what we used here, because we didn't know exactly what we wanted to do at the outset, just that we wanted to do as much as we could, we used the vehicle that the Federal Highway Administration refers to as IDIQ, uh, indefinite delivery, delivery uh, indefinite quantity. I believe I got that right. Bill will nod his head no if I got it wrong. But effectively what that means is what you have to do is you set a defined period of time and you set a defined dollar value. And within those parameters, you have the, the ability to issue task orders as necessary. And that's what we've done here. But what you can't do uh, is add dollars or time to that. And the reason being is that you're effectively stymieing any competitive ability for other firms to compete for that work. We can't, we can't have an open-ended contract that goes on in perpetuity without the opportunity for competition. Okay, so let me follow that up. So that if down the road, let's say a year from now, mm -hmm. we use what we have been given under Task Order 2, the information, and then go out and search out another grant that would then go to you if the commission decided to do a detail or a preliminary engineering design of that component, mm -hmm. we could do that through another source, through another, not a task order for, but a new contract. New contract. Yes. We can do that. Yep. You could do it on your own. You could do it through the department. There's also uh, the opportunity, I know. It, it may not align with the goals of what was intended with the project, but we're looking at a 2018 start for one of the 10-year plan projects that is currently programmed in the 10-year plan. Well, and that, I, I guess that's the point that I'm getting to. And so for purposes of reminding the uh, commissioners, we do have money in the 10-year plan. I believe there's some money that becomes available in 2018. So, and some of that money in 2018 is considered engineering money. I believe it's all engineering dollars. Yes. Okay. So, could some of that money support that section of Ocean Boulevard? If that were the direction that everybody wanted to go in, I, I think that there's an opportunity for that, yes. Okay. I could a question whenever. So what are you saying that we, they're not going to do from when it, from uh, <clears throat> Boar's Head to Winnicott Road? With the money that we have available, there's only so much we can do. Mm -hmm. And what they've done is, based on the feedback that we got from the Area Commission last year, last fall, have prioritized. And those priorities indicate that the priority need is to the south by the bridge to the split and Ocean Boulevard. Well, you know, there's something wrong here because just this week uh, I was approached by people from DOT. They're trying to take 20 feet of the lady that lives next door to me's uh, property to create a swell to try to get rid of that water that's building up there. And it is probably a good answer to her but I can't imagine that she's already lost 20 feet of her backyard to it's turned to mud from the water draining off Ocean Boulevard into her backyard. And I mean, it's bad enough she can expect the money that's coming in from <clears throat> um, the marsh, which isn't as big a problem as the water that drains in to her backyard. So this lady's, you know, I don't really know what her alternative is, if she can sue the state or what because she's 80 years old, she wants to sell her property now, and no one wants to buy it. And the people from DOT are actually coming and trying to, you know, I, I'm not saying they're trying to do anything to the woman. She's not home for right now, and I, 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 they've given me the information to have them call her. But this woman's property is ruined. My property is ruined. I can't use my front door. When is the state going to step up and do something? It's not my fault. I pay my $10,000 a year in taxes and can't even use the front door of my business after being living there for 50 years. It's only been the last probably seven or eight years that the problem has gotten so bad. 
There's not any other places that I know on Ocean Boulevard that it exists to that problem, to that degree, that people cannot use their property. Every time a car went by all day yesterday, a big wave of water hits my front windows, which are ruined. They hit this woman's uh, I don't know what to tell her children because I'm going to be meeting with her children. Uh, the man that owns Little Jack also is very concerned. They're doing his work over there. He, they, the guys that work for DOK came to me and said that <clears throat> they had to pay $25,000 to get a building permit to do what they're doing at Little Jack's. And really, no one really knows, and that's just to get a uh, building permit from the Corps of Army Engineers, and uh, no one really knows if that's going to do anything. The bigger problem is draining all, all that water from there, from all those drains that don't work. Now, is there any place on Ocean Boulevard where the drains don't work like this? There's 11 drains that don't work from Winnicunit Road until that area. Why should those people have to suffer? I mean, there's something wrong here. And I'm going to and I'm going to start uh, working on it with the town. I'm going to advise that lady to sue or do whatever she has to do because she can't sell her property. She's 80 years old. There's a problem here, a big problem that no one's listening to, and it's embarrassing. After having had my business there for 42 years, every single day yesterday, every time a truck went by, and I've got the pictures here if you want to see them, because I took them to show her son if it's going to work. You know, there's a problem here. And why you, we would be spending this kind of money, I'll do everything in my power to make the town not go along with this, because there's a problem here. So, Rick, I can tell you that. If, if I may, Rick, um, one of the things to remember is the purpose of the funds that this commission applied for, that, that William's managing a contract for. I understand it, it's that. It's not to do construction. It's not to do maintenance improvements. It's not to do drainage improvements. It's to first update the master plan and to inform all of us that are sitting around a table. These are waves are hitting these buildings. This is a small truck. When a big truck goes by, in fact, I got sprayed when DOT went by in an orange truck. I mean, it's unbelievable what's going on here. But, and I'm not going to just sit back and take right, it. Rick, I can tell you that. Rick, but the, was pur talking. the purpose of this plan that, that William is administering a contract for is to do a couple of things. The first is to, to update the Hemp Beach Master Plan, which is many years old. And then take additional funding, which is still available after that master plan update is completed, and focus on the areas that we felt were all important to the town, to Ocean Boulevard, to the businesses, for as much as that funding could go, to start a more detailed design conversation. We can't go out there. Like like you mentioned, it's probably the, the District 6 staff that came out and visited. They're very nice, and, too. And, and they're doing all that they can with a very limited operational budget. 25000 for them for an Army Corps permit, if that's what they have to pay, is a huge amount of money for our operations folks to come out and have to pay. The right fix is a is a long-term capital project, and we can't get that long-term capital project going until we complete the master plan. John's already indicated, and William's already indicated, after the master plan update, we have funding, thanks to then Councillor Sununu in a 10-year plan, to start the design of a long-term improvement to, to Ocean Boulevard. It doesn't go for the whole length of Ocean Boulevard, because there's only so much funding to go around. And the councillor at the time was only able to secure some amount of construction funding to start the process. Uh, I encouraged us not to go for additional funding yet through the 10-year plan process because we don't have the master plan update complete. The timeline, that we'll, the timeline that William has put forward to us to consider for the completion of the master plan update happens to coincide with the beginning of the next 10-year plan cycle when we will have some more information and we can go back and we can ask for more funding on behalf of the Beach Commission through the through the 10-year plan process to continue to get more funding in here to, to make real capital improvements that will not only help the infrastructure in the main beach area, but will allow us to go further to the north to deal with the drainage problems you have. But we need to go through a process to get that funding. Who's paying for the, uh, the drainage that they're doing right now? 
It's yeah. coming out of district operational budget funding. And it's probably coming from winter savings from the, the type of winter we've had. Yeah, well, it's they, they've already, they had to have a second um, permit p process because the original permit died. Yeah. But, you know. And a permit cost of that large, probably that's the only permit they're doing in the whole Seacoast area this summer. Uh, at a permit cost that size. Who paid the 25? Little Jackson or? No, 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 no. So this the DOT. They, Little Jacks cooperated with the DOT to give them an easement to go down in, in or through another piece of land because he owns all the land around there. But to be truthful, you know, I don't know. Evidently, they don't think that they can, from what I could gather from talking to these people, they don't think they can fix this problem. That's why they're trying to take this lady's front yard. But where else? I've been to being a selectman for 13 years. I haven't seen them take anyone's property like this and just let some person's property be ruined. And it is ruined. And if she was a younger person, she would have started complaining a long time ago. I tried to complain for her, but it's not my property. And uh, I've done everything I could at every angle. But, you know, really, I don't, I don't know what's going to happen. I mean, the money that you waste, because the road is almost has to be closed. Yesterday, it was all the way over to the medium. It was filled with water. It's only a matter of time till someone hits that water and crashes into one of those buildings. And it, that's happened already twice, but not for that reason, because the people were drunk or something like that. <laughs> okay. But, so there needs to, this is a serious problem. Let's talk after Rick. Yeah. Okay. So just one final question. If, if I may, before you go to the timeline. Bill, in terms of the 10-year transportation grant, with our money being available, some engineering money being available in 2018, is there any procedural process through either the legislators, the governor, DOT, to ask for some of that 2018 money to be rela released earlier? So 2018 in the 10-year plan world is this fall. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty soon Okay. before we get our work done. Okay. So it's probably a little premature, actually, to, to do anything to help us. And if, if the next follow-up question is, can we get some of that released even as soon as this fall or a little earlier for construction? No. no. We can't because of the federal rules that go along with that funding. Right. You have to go through a design process. You have to go through an environmental review and permitting process. You have to go through the right-of-way acquisition process. Right. All of that both prior to doing any construction. Okay. But I guess the point that I want to make sure that we're all clear on is that since this commission made it a point to go to task order two because we thought that was important mm -hmm. realizing that it can't be included this time around that that needs to be given a priority when we start getting some funds being released from uh the 10-year plan so what i would recommend this beach commission consider is communicating that directly to the department as part of the 10-year plan hearings that we'll be having this fall okay. that we take some of that funding that's becoming immediately available through the 10-year plan mm -hmm. and apply it to the northern area of the study area that has gotten partial attention with some of these study funds yep. but not the full attention as the, as the southern portion is yep. so that Rick's concerns and the, and the concerns of other residents and business owners um, can have at least the same level of Attention. Okay, and that's all I was asking. These so, gentlemen so said to me yesterday that you know, and I understand completely that they don't want to have to pay another twenty-five thousand dollars to get a uh, a permit from the Army Corps of Engineers or whatever. That makes so much sense. But what doesn't make sense? I asked the guy from Little Jacks. I said, "Well, what, what, what should I tell this lady?" He says, "I wouldn't let him do it." So. You know, he, he, he and he knows a lot more than I do. I mean, if this lady's you take 20 feet of Ocean Boulevard property to make a swale. She could have a store there too, if she wanted to, because it's zoned for that. All right. She should probably get a lawyer. 
I, I, I think we're I think we're moving into a, a, a personal um, situation. Not to say it's not important, but a personal situation that's out of this control in terms of the scope of what we're talking about tonight. So, but I I would Rick suggest that you talk to Bill after the meeting. Sorry, William. Go ahead no, that's all with right. the uh, schedule. Yeah. So the schedule is the second kind of standalone sheet that has the yellow highlighting on it. The yellow highlighting I did to indicate where they were tentatively looking to come in formally in front of the Hampton Beach Area Commission for those public meetings to talk about the results of the work that we're undertaking under this task order. So effectively, uh, you won't see us again until the fall or just before. We're not involved in the uh, kickoff meeting? Uh, you could be if you'd like to, but that's more or less uh, talking about what data is available, how you want to do this, how it's going to work with the Scheduling meetings with highway design and right of way and all the various bureaus of the department, but you're not excluded. Okay. And is that planned for during the day? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And when I firm up an actual date and time, this is just a proposal. Okay. Uh, I'll certainly let you know. <coughs> so, with plans, if if we stick to the schedule. Mm -hmm. what basically we will have an understanding of the areas that we have now talked about mm -hmm. um, the design and some construction cost yes is that enough for us to start January uh, June July 2nd to start now looking to add to the eight million dollars that we have in the 10-year plan and go back to let's say Washington to the Department of Transportation if whatever grant money there is available etc cetera, etc cetera. will we have enough information at that point to be able to finalize a final application to get Ocean Boulevard redeveloped so what is what we're going to be, the way the schedule is set up is we're looking to have the preliminary cost estimates uh, late fall, early winter, based on the schedule, which falls inside of, I can't tell you exactly when because we haven't scheduled the meetings yet, but our tentative 10 year plan schedule. <coughs> as the counselor hearings are occurring as uh, per usual in the fall, so that we'll have numbers at that point you would be able to have a conversation, but we won't be done okay. with the work yet. And what's going to help, and this is my opinion more than anything else, what's going to help with any applications to the feds for additional funds is to have a, an adopted plan in place. And that is uh, next summer. Okay. Okay. Questions from the commissioners? Bob? <clears throat> I had read that FEMA was considering revising its rules, which would, in effect, penalize you if you didn't meet their sustainability requirements in construction, so damage subsequently occur, and you went to them for funds to repair it. Would that have any impact on what Rick's been talking about? Potentially, but I'm not familiar enough with the rule change proposed. I don't think they changed the rule. Mm -hmm. I, they are concerned. So even the proposal, I'm not. <coughs> Fran? Can you give us a sense of what we'll see in September, in February, and in May? Yep. Uh, so in September, what we'll see is uh, the initial results of the concepts that they've looked at. So we talked about at least two uh, coming out of each of the various sections, signalized, roundabout, mm -hmm. uh, jug handles, all of that stuff. That initial work will be done. So it's, at that point, we'll make a decision, signalize not roundabout, jug handle, not something else? I would hope that we could go that direction, but what, what, what it may be is you're gonna, you may say, well, we need to, what about this, what about that? Can we tweak the, the design a little bit to do this or that kind of a thing? Okay. So uh, optimistically, yes, but realistically, we might have to go back and do some additional work after we have that meeting. And, and what about the town? Uh, I mean, you know, the town owns a lot of these streets. I mean, they're, they're going to have to be in on the decision as to how some of those things operate. Sure. So, 
So taking one big step back, and I, and I know it's easy to lose this because you're looking at this as we're trying to figure out what we're going to do out here. And we're, what we're doing is informing what we're going to do, but what you're going to have in the plan is not the answer. The answer is going to come from the full-fledged design phase that you get into when an actual project is identified where we're going to construct improvements. All this is doing is giving you more than well, we think this might work, or it looks like this area is a good place for this. We're taking it away from it looks like to we've, now we've gone out and actually looked at the conditions in the field. We've run some traffic simulations to see how it would work. We've analyzed how much space we have. We've looked at the design speed, and we've talked to the department about their concerns. So when you come to the end of this, you're still in a plan, but the plan is much better positioned to, to get past the, well, what do we want to do? It, we, we really would like to pursue this. But you don't know what this is in its full everything. That makes, does that make sense? Am I making sense? Yeah, I guess I, I, what I'm getting at is I, I hope when we come to a conclusion on a plan, it's a plan that everybody has coalesced around, you know, that it, it's not our plan that just hangs out there on its own, you know, it needs other people. Sure. Uh, buying into it, and specifically the town, the, the, the precinct. Yep. Uh, um. So from my perspective, how I look at this is that you're the vehicle for the comprehensive communication component. You've got select board member, you've got the town planner at the table, you've got the village district at the table, the regional planning commission. So everybody that needs to be part of the conversation is represented. And if that conversation needs to grow, you've got the opportunity, you've got the membership and the representation here to make that happen. And if we need to do some additional outreach to figure out a schedule that works for everybody because you want to increase the size of the group that's in the conversation, I'm more than happy to do that. Yeah. And, and I think the, the big thing, too, is that when all of this comes to the final master plan in July 1, we then, as a commission, have to go to different organizations with that recommendation for their sign-off, mm -hmm. one being the town planning department, Board of select them for the select, and then and then this in the state. So there, there will be a number of sign offs from our recommendation. We won't be making that final sign off, right? But, but again, and this is more my hope than anything else, but it, I'm assuming, and what I've based on what I've seen, I think it's a good assumption that when we get to the place where we need to have the sign offs, we've already done the initial consultation, so it's we're just checking a box at that point. Yep. There won't be any surprises. That's, that's my desire. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Bill, anything? I think it's just, William's already said this, but I'm going to reiterate it and beat on it a little bit. I think it's our, I think that many of us sit on committees where we don't do ourselves enough justice. And I'm not saying that about anyone in personally here around this table. But William and I see sitting, working with a number of regional planning commissions and other groups see people that come around and they care about particular topics, but sometimes they forget about the organizations they're representing. So I think it is very important and incumbent upon all of us to make sure that we're going back to the organizations that we represent to make sure that even if we're not getting the Board of Selectmen, the entire board, to every meeting, even if we're not getting the entire planning board or the planning commission to every meeting, that we're, we're doing our best efforts or making our best efforts to bring these ideas back to those organizations we're representing and at least bringing it to their attention so that if there are questions we become the conduit back to William or we we have more of these conversations with those individual groups so again so that when it becomes July 1st this is a checkbox and a formality more than a, a surprise to everyone that that is asked to vote and support the plan Jason, would you like to add anything? Um, not in particular about this. Um, I, we do update the planning board regularly on what's going on here. I will update them again on Wednesday evening about the discussion here this evening. So, Great. <coughs> so we will keep that going. Rick? Bob? Chuck? Okay. We're looking forward to July 1st. <laughs> <laughs> All right, William. And just okay. so we're clear, we're July 1, 2018, not this July. <laughs> I want, to, I want that last. Everybody's talking about July. Yeah. Well, I'm looking at conceptual design. <laughs> I, I like to see it in on paper. All right. So, 
that mm. July 1st as well. And if you're wondering that July 1st, 2018 date, the, the, this contract, the expiration, remember I said it was a defined dollar value and a defined end date time period of time, the contract ends at the end of August of 2018. Okay, thank you. And um, one one other comment from the commission is that I know we owe you, I owe you um, our next quarterly or a couple of quarters of in kind. So you'll get that soon. I wasn't even going to say anything about that, John. Okay. <laughs> I like to be transparent. <laughs> it's going to have Bill say that to you after the meeting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> William, thank you for coming to Hampton. And, uh, you know, if you uh, want some fried dough, links down on the beach are open right now. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Moving along, uh, old business. Um, uh, Hampton Police Department still wants us to have a discussion with him. I just haven't had a, a chance, so I will uh, see if the uh, chief would be willing to attend our meeting in May before the summer starts with regard to what, what plans he has for uh, traffic safety, pedestrian safety, and if there's anything that we can help in, in support of that. Um, under old business, I keep it keep it there. Is that if there's any commissioners that uh, have anything that they would like to uh, bring up as a an objective or a project, feel free to do so. On 417, uh, I attended along with Commissioner um, Merrill uh, attended a uh, board of selectmen meeting where we uh, once again updated them on our uh, activities focused on the 2016 annual report and also gave them some additional updates. And um, speaking just for myself, it appeared to have a good response from the, uh, the Board of Selectmen. And uh, um, we will continue to keep them up to date on our uh, activities as we progress, especially in the area of the transportation grant. Um, other old business, I told Mr. Preston that I would bring that back up. Uh, in terms of the Ashworth Town Parking and the, uh, the exit on Brown Ave. <coughs> so I open it up for discussion with the commissioner, the commission, uh, to see if somebody would be interested in what I guess I would call a recommendation to consider type of um, correspondence between us and the town and, and the Parks and Recreation. Um, I, we, we can't tell. Um, them what our thoughts are but we can recommend and ask them to consider our thoughts and if our thoughts would be for example um, doing a pilot project for the summer of 2017 where they would uh, schedule on fireworks night um, a pilot project to see if this would work um, that could be a recommendation by the Beach Commission so I leave that to Commissioners, if you want to bring this up for any discussion, uh, bring it up to a vote. I think um, it's something that we should consider. I think that um, the um, not just fireworks night, but major concert nights, an exit is, is, is something easy. I don't know about an entrance there to start, but I think the exit would definitely uh, help get people off the beach, better signage, um, quickest way to 95. Um, it, it, it'll alleviate, alleviate um, I, I see it myself personally on G Street. They're backed all the way up to the bottom of G Street trying to get out after a concert. Uh, and it doesn't move, and people are on that road for hours on end sometimes when it's a busy day. So I think it, I think it, would, it only could help. I don't think it could hurt. If it does hurt, like Charlie said, we stop it right off the bat. I think it's, uh, I think it's, it's a no-brainer. I think it should, should go for it. So without putting words in your mouth, uh, Chuck, uh, are you uh, making a recommendation um, for the uh, town of Hampton to consider opening up that gate um, on, on fireworks and special uh, major events? Yes. That's, That's your motion? That's motion. All right. Do I have a second? I would just like to, uh, as, converse, as part of the conversation, first of all, the Board of Selectmen is never going to go for it unless it's in writing from the police chief and the fire chief. That's the only thing that's going to sway the Board of Selectmen. Mm -hmm. So we can make a motion that we yeah. would have them no, look into I, it. I'm not saying. I think it's a good idea, and, too. And, but, and they should go to the police chief and the fire chief and, and, and get the recommendation from them. Why don't we just copy the police and fire chief from here? Yep. 
Yep, that's what you have to do. You got to get them on board, and then the board of selectmen will follow right along. I'm yep. almost positive. All right, so we have a, a motion and a second for the discussions. Of the commission is the other part about the G Street because you know, I was there for a long time too. Um, is, is that's the Prime Street with the police are coming up. So every single time you see that whole street backed up. If a, if a cruiser wants to come, it's a very narrow street, and lots of times you see them waiting, you know, moving one or two spaces at a time until these other cars try to get out of the way. So it's I think it would help alleviate the traffic there. You know, a lot of Charlie's comments, you know, had a, a lot of common sense. I don't understand why uh, it, it has to be a problem. I mean, I see a whole bunch of pluses and not very many negatives. So I think it's worthwhile to try. Okay. Yes, Mr. Preston. I, I, I'll i be very honest. You know, I, I, I think the incremental release is the whole key to it because I don't need it on a fireworks night or a casino show night. I want to spend my money and leave. And the concern has been massive evacuation as far as backing up. That'll create more of a problem in the incremental release. I want to be able to go down any day and then exit through. So, I mean, if that's your recommendation, that's your recommendation. But I, I really think that you should consider the incremental. If it doesn't work, like I said, close the gate. Thank you very much. Okay. All right, so we have a motion on the floor. A second, any further discussions? Hearing none, all in favor of Mr. Rage's motion. Opposed? Okay, I will draft up a letter based on Ann's notes of this motion and discussion and make sure we copy uh, both public safety uh, chiefs. Okay? Very good. New business. Um, I've asked Mr. Uh, Watson um, to just speak briefly on just giving this commission a, an awareness of if there's any possible funding for um, any type of transportation efforts that could complement the work that we're doing right now. So, Mr. Watson. Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, a couple of things, both on the federal and the state level, and, and not all of it is great news. I think we've talked about here in recent meetings about potential state legislation there would be some set-aside funding for some complete streets-type projects. Um, the legislature had been considering a complete streets policy, uh, directing the Department of Transportation to develop some guidance documentation on what that meant, defining that, which is a, a difficult thing to do across the state, and then providing some uh, small amount of funding for complete streets eligible projects to be administered through the Department of Transportation to see how those projects can be implemented throughout the state. And anything with new money in it is pretty much being killed in the legislature. So that came out of committee um, in expedient to legislate. So funding at the state level for any new um, transportation stuff is, is not existent. Um, There is a lot of confusion coming out of the legislature regarding what the 1819 budget picture will look like. Uh, the House not having passed a budget um, was, was a difficult uh, pill for the department to swallow. Uh, the Senate is starting with the governor's version of the budget, which talks about a state infrastructure bank of some sort where surplus funds at the end of the fiscal year would be available for a couple of different uh, opportunities. One would be transportation projects, the scope of which is yet to be defined. If the House budget had passed as uh, it had come out of committee, uh, those funds were defined to local bridges. Uh, municipal bridge aid program is woefully un underfunded at a statewide level. So a lot of that funding would be directed towards those types of efforts, which don't really help what we're looking for down here in terms of Ocean Boulevard. And certainly the program wouldn't be applicable even to the Hampton River Bridge or, or other, other things. So with not much happening at the state level, we turn towards the federal government, and they're doing just as good. Um, <laughs> we've heard from the president about his trillion-dollar infrastructure plan that's coming fast 
from the new Secretary of Transportation, Ms. Chow, and um, there's been no detail released, no timeline for when no detail will be released, and no other information that we have available to us. So the only thing we have as indicators right now is the state of the current operating budget for the federal government. The last time I checked today, uh, they're still scheduled for a shutdown after tomorrow if there's not a stopgap measure passed. Um, the funding proposals that have seemed to attract the most attention for passing um, don't help transportation at all. I'm not the bearer of good news tonight, I'm sorry. Uh, those trips that we usually take to Washington for Tiger funding and, and things like that, we won't need to take those trips anymore if, if this shorter term bill passes, because Tiger funding will be cut under the, the proposal from the, for, from the president, uh, as well as a number of transit programs, um, and maybe many of our federal highway counterparts that we work with. It's, it's not a very, pop, transportation is not a popular or sexy topic these days. And um, uh, until we get to, to see what this trillion dollar bill looks like, there really are not any new sources of revenue for us. What we will continue to have are the, um, what we have in place are 2016, 2016 funding levels are continued to be appropriated each year in a, a continuing resolution by continuing resolution piecemeal effort. Um, there is the opportunity to increase that funding by between 10 and 15 percent based on what was passed in the FAST Act under the prior administration if Congress should choose to actually fund transportation programs at that level. But they have not chosen to yet. And so um, Funding is, is staying at a lower level. Um, what it means is we continue to get the same amount of formula funding. The, the, the standard federal funds we get every year for bridge projects and highway projects, the, what's funding Ocean Boulevard in a 10-year plan, when we talk about federal funds that are in a 10-year plan, those, those standard funding levels are the same. Uh, so they're not taking that away from us. There is a uh, one tr uh, discretionary program called the Fast Lane Program, which is freight-based um, and trying to move trucks more efficiently along the highway system that continues to exist. <coughs> um, I don't know that that's uh, a program. I suppose we could look at it in a little more, more detail and see how it applies to this area it would probably be more beneficial to the I-95 corridor than it would be to the, the Route 1 or 1A corridor. Um, and we continue to have some of the smaller local programs like CMAC and transportation alternatives and, and things like that that are operating. And in fact, uh, we just met with the Governor and Executive Council last week to talk about both of those programs, uh, transportation alternatives or the TAP program and the CMAC program. And, we expect that um, this summer we'll be starting up another round of CMAC. So if we're looking for congestion relief, an issue down here, um, it could be sidewalks, it could be transit service, it could be turning lanes, it could be components of the construction project that might come out of the master plan. Uh, some of those uh, smaller pieces might be something that we want to look at for CMAC. <coughs> okay. That's what I have for information. Okay, any questions for uh, Mr. Watson? Okay, thank you, Bill. And I'm, and I'm, and I'm sure you will keep us uh, abreast when uh, the president announces uh, how much money in the hands he's going to get. I'm so thrilled to be here on such a positive night from <laughs> Okay, uh, next is uh, I'm going to make a, uh, a meeting request to the Rockingham Planning Commission for the month of May to see, um, and it's much more of a two way discussion. Uh, we've never invited them to come in and kind of say, are there any funding uh, sources out there that we should be looking at? Can they help us with anything in terms of when it comes to funding in, in a variety of different areas, and not just transportation, but I believe that they, they focus on uh, other areas too. So um, I'll work with Fran on, on setting that up. Um, 
and it, it'll just be good to get a couple of the players at Rocky and Planning to come in and visit with us and, and, and have that two-way conversation. On the new business, uh, Mike Hausman has asked me to announce tonight that the uh, State Parks Spring Operation Meeting will take place on May 16th between 5 o'clock and 6.30 up at the, uh, uh, the room uh, above the seashell uh, stage. Um, as you know, we have hosted uh, both a spring and fall uh, meeting for State Parks. Um, um, we will need somebody from the Commission uh, to help with that because uh, there's some of us that will be attending a, um, a going away party uh, for Pat Morgenstern uh, that same day, same night, same time. Um, so um, I'll be reaching out to somebody to see if they would be willing to kind of host that. Is it at 5.30? 5, 5 o'clock to 6.30, and that's something that so you Wednesday. should press on the um, Board of Selectmen's I'll meeting. I'll mention it. I noticed it. Because yeah. I know that Regina had uh, wanted to make sure that she had it on the calendar. So, uh, and then the only other piece, um, and I would ask all of you here tonight to check your calendars. Um, our scheduled meeting for May is May 25th which is right before the uh, Memorial Day weekend. Um, I have a very special family celebration that evening that I can't um, get out of, nor do I want to. Uh, so I'm looking at May 21st, that Tuesday, and seeing if we could switch uh, our meeting for the month of May to the 21st Tuesday rather than the 23rd Thursday. Is there any major objection to that schedule change? What day? May 23rd. I'm sorry. May 1st, you said? Hold on. May 23rd is the day I, I'm asking. Yes, I'm sorry. May 25th was our regular scheduled um, meeting. And I'm asking if the commission would mind meeting on the 23rd Tuesday rather than that Thursday. We might not be able to get this room that night. No, we probably get something. So, yeah. Okay. Rick, do you know what night the 91A town light meeting is in May? No, because I'm not going to it. I've <laughs> <laughs> already sat through it so many times. I'm I not going. Sure that made that clear. I'm taking like off. It's a, <laughs> and, and, um, it's a Monday night. Oh, it's a Monday? Yeah, oh, it's going to okay. be a Monday night. Okay. And Bob, I'm glad you reminded me. I should have put that on the, the schedule. We did get an invite to attend, but if you recall, it was this commission that actually hosted one of those sessions. So I, I yeah, that's what I told them. I sat through it here. I sat through it at the planning board. I believe we had it. I said I've been at it over you're, you're and over. You're an expert. Well, then they reminded me what. All right, I did so wrong. so Bob, <laughs> would you be okay for the 23rd? Yeah. Fred? Yes. No? Yes. <laughs> Rick? Yeah. Well, yep, I just want to take this opportunity to say that that night at 5.30, George Purvey is doing his fundraiser for Pan Am Mass Challenge, Dana Faber at the Victoria Inn. So maybe we can go to that first and then come to your meeting here. It would be great. Okay. Help George raise some money. He's trying to raise $75,000. Okay. And I might be able to go, I'll, I'll have to check my schedule after I go home, I might be able to do the 20... First one on the Tuesday at five o'clock. Twenty third. Twenty third. No, the uh, the oh. one for the uh, state park. That's the six. Oh. That's that's 16th. May. The sixteenth. I mean, yeah, that's at five o'clock on yes. Tuesday, right? Yeah, I probably can do that. Okay. Unless for some reason I I have to check my schedule. Okay. All right, and and Chuck, you you're always available, right? <laughs> yes. Twenty twenty third. Okay. Yep. Okay. All right, and I'll let the other commissioners know that we're in here tonight that we're moving the meeting until the 23rd. Any other new business? Hearing none, uh, I'll make, make a, I'll have a no motion to adjourn. Uh, Mr. Ladd made the motion. This man second any further discussions? All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Channel 22, thank you very much. Uh, what, what, what is CMAC telling?